morning, Representative Shane, members of the committee. My name is Matt Prendival. I'm the Clean Production Project Director with the Natural Resources Council of Maine. And I want to say that NRCM strongly supports LD973. We thank Representative Berry for bringing this bill to the attention of the committee. Let me just start by saying that NRCM believes that compact fluorescent light bulbs are a great product. We've been promoting them for years, along with hundreds of other environmental organizations around the country and around the world. With the increased consumer awareness about rising electricity costs, CFLs have been purchased and installed in homes where they're saving money, they're saving energy, they're reducing air pollution, they're reducing global warming pollution, and yes, they're reducing mercury pollution. These bulbs can save the average homeowner about $30 to $100 per bulb. So if you were to switch out the estimated 40 light sockets in your homes with CFLs instead of incandescents, you would save, at a minimum, $1,200 over the lifetime of those bulbs. Not to mention you'd be displacing over 100,000 pounds of carbon dioxide, which would be the equivalent of not driving your car for over half a year. So the bulbs are great. The problem, as you know, the reason why we're here is that they contain small amounts of mercury, so they need to be disposed of properly when they burn out. Even though every part of a CFL can be recycled and can be recycled and turned into new products, EPA estimates that only 2% of these bulbs are currently collected and recycled. So to prevent the mercury that's in these bulbs from escaping into our homes and the environment, we need a good collection and recycling program like the one that's proposed by 973. So right now, many towns do collect compact fluorescents, but they typically charge a dollar to recycle them. In this case, the costs of managing the mercury are borne by the taxpayers, and the charge is likely a deterrent for many people. Some towns only collect them once a year at household hazardous waste days. Efficiency Maine does have this interim collection program at participating hardware stores, but it's funded through a charge on your electricity bill that's supposed to go to energy efficiency investments, not waste management programs. There are also serious questions as to how long Efficiency Maine will continue to run it. Last year, that program collected 4,000 bulbs, but it rebated over 1.2 million bulbs. Having rate payers pay to recycle 4,000 bulbs is one thing, but when you're talking about millions of bulbs, you're talking real money. In terms of putting in place an ongoing program, there are several options. One approach is to create a program that's modeled after Maine's successful electronic waste recycling law. The producers of the product would be responsible for the end-of-life recovery and recycling costs. This is the approach that's been proposed in LD973, and it's been a huge success in Maine and Keyways, with over 150 manufacturers participating, representing over 350 brands, and over 14 million pounds of toxic e-waste diverted from our landfills and incinerators for recycling. Our law, drafted through the leadership of this committee, has become the national model, with 16 other states having followed suit in developing laws after Maine's approach. Yet, at the time, there was a lot of opposition when this law was proposed. Only one manufacturer, Hewlett Packard, stood up and said, this is the right thing to do. And the committee was persuaded then, and I hope you'll be persuaded now, that this is the right approach, to internalize the costs of collecting and recycling the mercury at the end of the useful life of the light bulbs. You may hear later in this hearing from one or more representatives from the companies that manufacture these bulbs that the cost of recycling will be a killer, that people won't buy the light bulbs if they cost more, and that the companies might not even sell them here in Maine. Well, we heard those same arguments with e-waste. We heard the exact same arguments. And as far as I know, the e-waste bill has not had a significant impact on computer sales in Maine, and we believe that the creation of a producer-financed recycling program for compact fluorescent simile will not affect sales in Maine. This position is supported by the analysis that's attached to my testimony, which shows that even with 100% recovery rates, which is, of course, the end goal, we hope to get there, but it's unlikely we'll get even close at the beginning, the impact of the program required by LD973 might be just 15 cents per bulb. For perspective on this cost increment, it's worth noting that even just a few years ago, compact fluorescents were selling for $6 to $10 a bulb. Now, on average, they're about $3 a bulb. I walked into Walmart the other day, and I bought a four-pack of 60-watt equivalents for $6.40, a little over $1.50 per bulb, for a light bulb that's going to save me about $50 in reduced energy costs over its lifetime. So 15 cents internalized into the cost of a bulb with these new low costs for CFLs will not affect sales, in our opinion. When talking about cost, it's also important to know that efficiency main, that main rate payers through the efficiency main rebate program and the U.S. government have supported a massive education campaign in support of CFLs, helping boost sales of these products for all of the manufacturers that may testify against this bill today. Some may say that the cost of a CFL recycling program should be assigned to the electric utilities and rate payers, 
um, or be left to taxpayers in, so, in some fashion. Uh, we believe that these proposals won't work. Uh, we left taxpayers on the hook with electronic waste um, before we passed the recycling law, and that didn't work. There were millions of television sets and computers that were stockpiled in attics and basements around, around the state uh, because people didn't know what to do with them. And I suspect the same thing is happening with compact fluorescents. You would be surprised at how many calls I get on a weekly basis with people that have two, three, or, or ten of these bulbs, and they don't know what to do with them. Uh, with passage of LD973, people will be able to drop off their used bulbs at participating municipal transfer stations and hardware stores. It would be easy, and the bulbs would be, end up being recycled um, and not going to incinerators or landfills or smashed in the trash in our homes. Um, over the past decade, Maine has systematically and very successfully been identifying mercury in products for the purpose of removing it from the waste stream. And this committee has shown tremendous leadership. It's actually been tremendous national and international leadership on many of these issues. Um, creating an effective recycling system for CFLs is, the, is a logical next step in the effort to keep mercury out of the environment. Um, CFL may, pay, may, may claim, just last point here, that they're not in the recycling business, but they are. Uh, for the past several years, CFL manufacturers have been part of successful producer respons responsibility uh, finance programs for mercury-containing lighting in the European Union. British Columbia began a producer finance system um, uh, this year, and there are four more Canadian provinces with programs in the works. Um, LD973 will put into place a, a, a system that producers are already by, abiding by in these other jurisdictions. On a, po on a positive note, the, the lamp manufacturers have been working hard to reduce the mercury content in their lamps, and we applaud them for it. And we're, we're, I'm happy to, we're happy to partner with them on an amendment um, to standardize the mercury content standard language in the bill with the other uh, laws that have been passed in California and soon in Vermont. Um, we're also happy to work with them on the purchasing language so that the state purchases the most energy efficient low mercury bulbs without diminishing competition. Um, the real issue, of course, is going to be the recycling program. Uh, we believe that CFL lighting is an important part of our strategies to reduce energy costs and energy use, but we need a free, uh, convenient statewide system to collect these balls at the end of their useful life. So we urge you all to pass on LD 973, and I'd be happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions to the committee? Representative Ayer. On your on the back page, uh, Matt, I guess the last page of the graph, or not, it's not a graph, it's more or less a chart. Can you interpret that? Uh, the estimated, the Washington State estimated impact on consumer pricing. I'd, I'd be happy to do that. What Washington State did is they took uh, nationally available sales, sales data um, for lamps, and they, they based, broke it down by population to get the amount of lamps sold in Washington State. And then from there, they divided the amount of, of, of lamps sold in, in the state um, with the amount of lamps that they expected to collect, and that's where they came up with the cost impact. So it's about 15 cents per ball. 16 cents? Yeah. Uh, at the bottom, you'll see, and they, spread, they had a couple different scenarios. I only uh, projected one for you because this is the, the, wor the, the best case scenario from the environmental standpoint, and probably the worst case scenario from a cost standpoint for manufacturers, um, is for 100% collection. Um, and and it, you can either spread it over fluorescence only, so you only spread it over mercury-containing lighting, um, or you can spread it over um, other mercury-containing lighting as well. And so it, it, and they, it's they about they the Yes. Yeah. They extrapolated up to 2020. Yes, exactly. Yeah, and I, have, I actually have the, the other analyses as well. I'm happy to to provide 